Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and partner at Westfall. And today I was going through my LinkedIn post, right, where I saw this really interesting comment about the front end, back end uh, dynamic. And what was even more interesting was the comment actually explaining things about why don't we just throw food into the toilet bowl. So that was, that was really hilarious. But uh, it's a good example. It's a good example, except that I don't think it really explains everything in, in detail. And I think a better example is a restaurant. So when you think about back-end and front-end software, right? Try to think more in terms of a restaurant and do you need a kitchen and a dining room? Okay, so then remember, try to think about that uh, analogy down here. I think that's much more better. So in the beginning, right, you, do you really need a kitchen? And the answer is maybe, maybe not. But in the beginning, and some real life examples about having one or the other. So for example, if you have no front end and just the back end, people are coming into your restaurant and eating where you cook. And a good example of this is like a teppanyaki restaurant, right? You know, the chef is making food right where you are eating it. So that's one example. What about front end and no back end? So think about an example like that would be something like Korean barbecue, right? So they take the raw food out and then it is the users who are actually cooking their own food. So these are two examples in that dynamic. But this is where the question comes in and what are the pros and cons of every uh, system? Remember in the beginning, they're all together in one. Well, let's take a look at the first example, making a peanut butter sandwich in your room, okay? Very easy example, but I can already see some drawbacks. One, if you start cooking, the whole thing is gonna dirty up your house. Number two, right, you can't really make very complex uh, dishes, you know? Your presentation layer and your backend layer are kind of together. So that's one problem already. You can't get very complex. Now, having uh, no front end and a back end, what happens? First, there's a limit to the amount of presentation. Take, for example, that teppanyaki chef, right? Who's cooking and cutting things. He might be a really good cook. He could really sear it and cook it really sharp, but he might not be able to do very good presentations. He might not be able to clean up the dishes. There's a limit to the amount of presentation ability he can do. The other thing is that it seems to be a limitation, right? You can only have the number of dishes that are in the back end for a number of people because the, everyone has to be served by that chef. You can't have backs of this back end is uh, people are in the back end. Um, now, the flip side of it is no back end and just the front end. So presentation where your users interact with the code. Now, there I could see a couple more issues. The first thing is quality. All right, if you've ever been to Korean barbecue, some people could overcook it. Some people are scared of the fire. They don't like touching this kind of stuff. Some people are going to add too much sauce. That could happen to you in the software business. You could have people accessing the wrong thing. They could press the wrong buttons, there's not valid, no validation going on. So that's one of the issues. The other one, it could be privacy and security. So today's COVID land, right? You don't want someone who's got COVID touching the barbecue, you want the food to come out packed out. So these are just examples of how we have arranged our code that used to start in just one scripting language. If you write a Python script, right? It's front end, back end, and everything together. The presentation layer is there. It's a static presentation layer, you know? If you think about calculator, that's the whole thing. But when we move on to, you know, a whole web development system, it's probably a good idea to have a functional restaurant where you have your restaurant, uh, where you have your kitchen that makes the food, and somewhere where you prep the food and deliver it and present it like a dining room, right? And everyone just stays in place. You don't want people shifting in and out. There's difficulty in protecting the code. Uh, just imagine, right? In the, if you had a full restaurant, somebody might come in and steal the abalone from the side or the foie gras or the caviar that's not supposed to be for them. And it gets even more complicated with front ends 
where you have different levels of users. So some very high powered users that have access to a lot of data and some lower end guys who may be a lower subscription or a free tier that you'd want to protect. So you want to be able to segregate these guys uh, very carefully. So this idea of front end and back end, right? It's not uh, that difficult to understand, just splitting up the code in the right uh, rooms or what we call the right buckets. And it's the way that you want to arrange things. But once again, manage your code how you want to solve the problem. That in a nutshell is the front end, back end split. Uh, that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.